Good morning, OUC, and welcome to worship this morning. Welcome to this time and this place, wherever it is you join us from. Together this morning, we are worshiping as one body. And if you are tuning in at a later date, you are worshiping with us as part of the body of Christ. And that is the focus of our worship this morning. Reverend Molly will be reflecting on Paul's letter to the church at Corinth and talking with us about gifts and about how in the body of Christ there are many members and people are gifted in many different ways. And so this morning, let us reflect, let us hear with new ears, let us give thanks for our bodies, for the body that we are together corporately, for the body that is the earth, for the land on which we live and move and have being, the land first inhabited by the First Nations, by the peoples of the Algonquin and Anishinaabe communities. Let us worship with reverence and thanksgiving to God and with respect and care for one another and for our indigenous brothers and sisters. Let us worship in the spirit of peace and reconciliation. We are glad that you have joined us. Welcome. Please join me in the call to worship this morning. There are many gifts, talents, and abilities given by God. And together we say, but there is only one spirit. There are a variety of things we can do to serve the Lord. But it is the same Lord we all serve. There are many activities we can do to serve God. Teach, sing, clean, preach, play, work. But all these are activated by God. There are many manifestations of God's spirit in the world. It is impossible to list them all. To say that one is better than another is foolish. God gives to each as God chooses. Thanks be to God. Please join me in prayer. Bountiful God, you have blessed us with so many gifts. Your spirit has touched our lives, bringing wisdom, ability, strength, courage, and passion. In this time of worship, may we be open to receiving these gifts. Help us claim our gifts and use them to bring liberation and justice to a hurting world. May the words of our mouths and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable to you. May the transforming spirit of joy and unity Bind us together as your body, that we may be your hands and feet and voice in this, your world. Amen. Hello, friends. It has been a very long time since I have been able to be with you in this way. 
I'm glad to be able to say hello and to reconnect. I hope you're doing well. I am recording this today on what you are probably experiencing as a snow day. It's Monday and it's the day that it snowed and snowed and snowed and everybody was advised to stay home. I hope you had the chance to get outside and play in the snow and to enjoy this time. And I welcome you this morning. So a little bit later on, Reverend Molly is going to be talking with the big people about a letter that the Apostle Paul wrote to a church in a little place in Greece. And in that letter, he talks about how we are all one body. And he talks about how a body has many parts to it. Now, you know that's true, right? If you look at your own body, if you put up your hand, you see that you have a hand. You have that old uh, song about the different bones being connected to the different bones. The knee bone connected to the leg bone, connected to the ankle bone. We are all bodies. We have bodies and they all have parts. And as a community, we are one great big body, and each person is a part of that body. So I wanted to talk with you this morning about, well, first of all, about my love for the cartoon strip called Peanuts and its main character, Snoopy. I'm thinking that some of you know who Snoopy is. Well, I love the Peanuts. And for the next many children's lessons, children's times that we have together in the coming months, I am going to be talking with you about Snoopy. Because I have found some resources that I think are really cool. Snoopy has put together some ideas for how we can take care in 2022. And this month, the idea is to create something called a vision board. Now, a vision board is just a fancy term for pictures and words together that show something that we are hoping for. Something that we are hoping is true and that we want to do or to be. The vision board for January, according to Snoopy, involves how to take care. And it's split into three sections. The first one is about taking care of myself. And so because today we're talking about bodies, I wonder if the first part of a vision board that you might make is about how you could take care of your body. I can think of one way, and that's brushing your teeth. Every night before you go to bed and every morning when you get up, I'm pretty sure mom and dad or grandma and grandpa or some big person in your life is helping you remember that that's important to do. The second part of this vision board has to do with taking care of others. So I wonder how we might take care of other people's bodies. One thing I thought of is on a cold day, we might bring them a hot cup of tea. And on a hot day, we might bring them a tall glass of cold water. 
that would be a really lovely way to help take care of someone else's body. And then the third section of Snoopy's vision board exercise for this month has to do with taking care of the earth. Now that might seem kind of strange, but I have had teachers who have taught me to think about the earth as having a body, that the earth itself has a body that we, the humans, need to take care of. So what are some ways that we could take care of the earth body? I bet you some of you are thinking we could plant some seeds or maybe we could help somebody plant a whole garden. I think we could also make a point to pick up litter outside when we see it. There are lots of ways that we can care for our bodies, for other people's bodies, and for the body that we call the earth. I am going to make sure that you have access to the handout so that you can create your own vision board for taking care of bodies this month. And now I invite us to share a prayer together. Dear God, thank you for our bodies. Thank you for our church family, for the whole body of the church community. And thank you for the earth body, for this planet that we get to live on. Help us take good care of all these precious gifts that you have given to us. We love you, God. Amen. church is wherever God's people are praising, singing God's goodness for joy on this day. The church is wherever disciples of Jesus remember his story and walk in his way. The church is wherever God's people are helping, caring for neighbors in sickness and need. The church is wherever God's people are sharing the words of the Bible in gift and in deed. The church is wherever God's people are praising, singing God's goodness for joy on this day. The church is wherever disciples of Jesus remember his story and walk in As we prepare to hear God's words spoken to us, let us gather together our hearts in prayer. Let us pray. God of all wisdom, we have gathered before you to read your holy word and to be guided by it. Send your spirit to each one of us in our places 
that we might feast on your word and digest its meaning to fill our bodies with your wisdom and your truth. Amen. This is a reading from 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 12 to 31, taken from the New Revised Standard Version. One body with many members. For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For in the one spirit we were all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and we are all made to drink of one spirit. Indeed, the body does not consist of one member, but of many. If the foot would say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less a part of the body. And if the ear would say, because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less a part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the hearing be? If the whole body were hearing, where would the sense of smell be? But as it is, God arranged the members in the body, each one of them, as he chose. If all were a single member, where would the body be? As it is, there are many members, yet one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you, nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. On the contrary, the members of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable. And those members of the body that we think less honorable, we clothe with greater honor. And our less respectable members are treated with greater respect. Whereas our more respectable members do not need this. But God has so arranged the body, giving the greater honor to the inferior member, that there may be no dissension within the body, but the members may have the same care for one another. If one member suffers, all suffer together with it. If one member is honored, all rejoice together with it. Now you are the body of Christ and individually members of it. And God has appointed in the church first apostles, second prophets, third teachers, then deeds of power, then gifts of healing, forms of assistance, forms of leadership, various kinds of tongues. Are all apostles? Are all prophets? Are all teachers? Do all work miracles? Do all possess gifts of healing? Do all speak in tongues? Do all interpret? But strive for the greater gifts, and I will show you a still more excellent way. I have always enjoyed Mr. Potato Head, or to be correct, Potato Head, as the toy company Hasbro has now moved to making this toy gender neutral, which is lovely. I have Potato Head pieces from Disney, from favorite movie characters for various holidays, and somehow in each progressive basement purge, the Potato Head bin continues to make the cut. When reading today's scripture for the first time, it was Potato Head that somehow jumped to mind. Perhaps not the most theologically accurate, but somehow it spoke directly to the text. We have all seen children play with Potato Head, making it all eyes or all noses and laughing at the result. Look, Mom, how crazy is this? Similarly, children delight in putting the mouth where the eye should be, the nose where the mouth should be, the tongue where the ear should be, and imagine the ridiculous outcome if an arm tried to smell or a mouth tried to listen. And in so doing, children play out exactly what Paul was trying to explain to the church at Corinth those many years ago. If only he had had a potato head. Paul is writing to the people of Corinth, saddened by what he is hearing about dissension among the many early converts to the faith. Among other things, he learns that they are fighting about the distribution of spiritual gifts and which gift is most important. And so, in chapter 12 of his letter, 
he seeks to address these concerns. The image of a body as a communal reality is not unique to Paul. It would have been familiar to the people he wrote to, as others in the Roman world, particularly politicians and philosophers, used the same image. Most other writings use the image of a body to support a social hierarchy in which there was the need of a head, namely the wealthy ruling elite, as well as hands and feet, namely the working class, in order to survive. Paul decides to take this image in a very different direction, pointing out the importance of all body parts to function. The unity of the body does not mean that some parts are more important than the others, but instead it emphasizes the need for honoring each and every part. The end result of the body metaphor in Paul's hands is not the same old hierarchy, or even the inverse of that culturally expected pattern of domination with new people placed on the top, but instead it's a deep unity of the whole body where each part is cared for by the other. For me, this seems a particularly apt passage for us to consider in the midst of this global pandemic and the place where we find ourselves in two years after all this began. When the coronavirus first made an appearance way back in March of 2020, the whole world was turned upside down. The harsh realities of lockdowns and physical distancing in order to stay healthy took us all by surprise. Yet, even while we were forced to be apart from each other, there seemed to be a sense of common purpose and communal care that existed. People put signs in their windows, waved at each other when out for walks, checked in to see if friends needed grocery drop-offs, and somehow there was a sense of being in this together, one body. 22 months into this pandemic, and the brutal effects of ever-changing government rules, stampedes for masks and test kits, vaccine mandates, as well as social isolation, has led to a current climate where it seems now every person is out for themselves. And while Paul didn't know it then, his letter to the church at Corinth could just as well have been written to the people of Canada today. In verse 21, Paul imagines a scenario in which certain body parts claim no need of the others. The eye saying to the hand, I have no need of you, or the head dismissing the usefulness of feet. And while this imaginary scenario may at first seem to be about potato heads and not much else, the inclination towards radical individualism that it illustrates is all too real. Debates about sending children to school, visiting relatives, the need for wearing masks, the importance of vaccines, all show us that we have lost our sense of interconnected interdependence that we once had. For Paul's purposes, individual rights or personal freedoms are entirely secondary to the good of the whole. It is a crucial and much needed reminder that Paul gives us that we belong to each other. Paul also highlights that when one part of the body is hurt, the whole body is at a disadvantage. And so it is for the body of Christ. When one member suffers, it is our collective and communal suffering. Similarly, when one member rejoices, we all have cause for celebration. At the beginning of the pandemic, there was this sense, this shared sense that we were all suffering, and there seemed to be room for sympathy and empathy and genuine concern for each other's well-being. We recognized that while some people were disproportionately affected by COVID in their jobs or their family lives or their own personal health, that we were all suffering in some way. That collective hurt and communal grief has only compounded month after month after month. And yet it seems now that we have become so consumed in our own loss that we've forgotten to notice those around us. 
We're finding it hard to put ourselves in other people's shoes. Grief and anxiety are leaking out in the ways that we talk to each other, the ways that we treat each other, and I personally have been shocked at the ways I have seen some very good people act in very difficult ways. Likewise, I have been amazed and awed at the ways others have welcomed me into their celebrations, allowing me to experience their joy and their love with them. Baptisms, weddings, words of gratitude, even the simple pleasure of a kind interchange in the midst of COVID have become particularly precious and life-giving for my weary soul. Finally, Paul reminds the people of Corinth and the people of Orleans that each and every spiritual gift, each and every role we serve is vital to the functioning of the body. There is no one quality or skill that is more important than the others. Indeed, we are only able to live out our callings when we rely on and give support to others to live out theirs. In other words, it's our boundaries that allow others to live to their fullest potential. Friends, it has taken me many years and countless hours of therapy to start to understand this point. So if you aren't there yet, let me save you some time. Paul points out the varying gifts that people have. No one more important than another, all crucial to the well-being of the whole. When we truly embrace this concept, it then means that we are free to use our gift without feeling the need to do everything, to be everything for everybody. When we can trust that each member of the whole community is contributing their best, then we are able to live out our passion, our purpose in that community. Practically, it means that we can set boundaries. We can be clear with our yes and with our no. We can trust that we don't have to do it all ourselves, nor does God want us to do it all alone. We were made to live in community where each member is equally important and equally responsible to each other. So what do Paul's messages mean for us individually and as a faith community, particularly in these times of constant change? and uncertainty. Well, as a faith community, we head into a new year knowing that it will be filled with change and possibility, challenge and opportunity. And so I think it's important that we take our friend Paul's letter to heart. This year, above all others, will be one in which we will need to rely on each other to recognize each other's gifts, and to honor each other's limits. We will need to listen for the Spirit's nudging to say yes to serving each other in new ways. We will need to listen to the Spirit's wisdom to say no to those things that feel like they are too much for us to carry. We will need to build one another up with kindness, with patience, and with recognition that each one of us brings something unique to offer. To be sure, this body is tired, both our physical selves and our collective body of Christ. Our feet are sore, our backs ache, our shoulders are tense. We have aged greatly in these past two years. And yet, this body has accomplished beautiful things in the midst of tremendous adversity. We have learned we are capable of being community, of serving each other, of reaching out beyond our walls in ways we could have never imagined. There is still life in these old bones yet. 
And it is my firm belief that there are good things, God things, that lie in store for us just around the corner. All that is left for us to do is to allow this body of Christ to function with unity, with grace, and with respect for all as we seek to serve God in our time and place. Beloveds, my commitment to you is to be the best hand or kidney or ear or heart that I can be. No more, no less. And I ask that each of you will also be the best spleen or eye or knee or foot that you can be too. And I trust that God will be with us each moment of the way, supporting us, guiding us, strengthening us individually and collectively. Let us strive together for the greater gifts, dear ones, and know that if we do, God will show us a more excellent way. May it be so. Amen. and bless our hearts. Come touch our souls that we may know and love you. Your quiet presence all our fears dispel. Create a space for spirit to grow in us. Let life and beauty fill us. Come touch and bless our souls. Come touch our minds and teach us how to reason. Set free our thoughts to wonder and to dream. Help us to open doors of understanding to welcome truth and wisdom. Come touch and bless our minds. Come touch us in the moments we are fragile. And in our weakness your great strength reveal. That we may rise to follow and to serve. Steady now our and bless our ears. Please join me in a time of prayer. These words that we will pray together are adapted from Seasons of the Spirit. I invite you now to close your eyes to listen to my words and to pray along with me. Loving and merciful God, we long for news that is good, good for this earth, good for our hearts, good for communities. We dream of a world where everyone has enough and pray that we might live simply and justly to create an equal distribution of your goodness. We imagine creation 
in all its beauty and pray we will walk lightly on this earth, living as co-creators and caretakers of your gift. We envision inclusive circles of dialogue, holy conversation of study and prayer that inspire inquiring minds and discerning hearts in all of us. We picture a place of hospitality and pray that we will respond compassionately as we welcome in the brokenness of our world. O oh, great dreamer, teach us to listen for your good news about those ways you have set before us, exemplified for us, and called forth from us in Jesus the Christ. Inspire us in your ways, that our imaginings, hopes, and prayers become the fulfillment of all that is possible in our world, our neighborhood, and in each of us. Now let us gather our prayers together in one voice as we say an alternative version of the prayer of Jesus. Eternal Spirit, Earth Maker, Pain Bearer, Life Giver, Source of all that is and that shall be, Father and Mother of us all, Loving God in whom is heaven, the hallowing of your name echo through the universe, the way of justice be followed by peoples of the world, your heavenly will be done by all created beings. Your commonwealth of peace and freedom sustain our hope and come on earth. With bread we need for today, feed us. In the hurts we absorb from one another, forgive us. In times of temptation and test, strengthen us. From trials too great to endure, spare us. From the grip of all that is evil, free us. For your reign in the glory of the power that is love, now and forever. Amen. Friends, as we have heard spoken, we are the hands and feet of God in our community. We are called to soothe suffering, to live with compassion, to build up God's loving peace. So as we leave this time together, how will we live? We go from this time of worship to share the gifts that we have been given we go from this time of worship to build up the body of Christ. We go from this time of worship to carry the holy to the world around us. Beloveds, go in love, go in peace, go with God. Amen.